Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about this idea that people can take in too much protein, that it's a problem or anything else. And let's be realistic here. Honestly, the only three people who need to be concerned about too much protein intake might be people with diagnosed serious kidney diseases. Uh, there's no data that's been found that actually shows any risk of uh, kidney issues with any intake of protein for people who have healthy kidneys. You know, people who have damage to their kidneys, they've lost a kidney, have kidney disease, whatever, yeah, they might want to talk to a dietitian about it. It would be a very, very good idea. But for everyone else, uh, this is not a real concern. And that's generally been the only, only health concern. Um, the other people may be people who struggle to eat enough food to gain weight, which the general population is probably not a problem for any of them. Uh, I mean, that's not a problem for any of them. Most of them are trying to lose weight, if anything, and the higher protein would be useful to that. It would be extremely useful for that. Uh, and then, of course, people whose budgets don't allow for it because protein is the most expensive form of calories that we can consume, both metabolically and financially. So yeah, sure, if budget constraints are there, it can be a problem. But, but generally speaking, eating excessive amounts of protein is probably more helpful than it is as far as any risk goes. Then again, I understand that for a lot of people, it's a budget constraint issue. You know, that the, the cost of doubling their protein intake per day uh, might be a, a a significant impact on their quality of life. Maybe their budgets are that tight. I mean, I get it. But that's not the reason that we pick the foods that we pick when we're discussing performance, nutrition, weight loss, or whatever, usually. It's usually the case of, you know, what, what are our benefits here? And if it's worth it in that regard, could you make sacrifices somewhere else in your life to do it? And I don't even mean that you need to get protein supplements. Although, you know, I, I do do a lot of protein powder myself, but I don't drink it, everyone. Well, you know, when you say that, people always have this idea. Well, I'm trying not to drink my calories. Well, I'm not drinking my protein either. I'm mixing it with yogurt and other foods. <laughs> like, I mix it into foods that I'm going to eat with a spoon. All right, I don't just drink it as a shake. I don't actually drink protein shakes for the most part. But that aside, let's, let's talk about uh, the various benefits. And they're not really about gaining muscle, are they? It's not really about gaining muscle. It's more of a body composition, metabolism thing, all of that. So it's not so much just about gaining muscle because people ask the wrong question with that all the time. They'll say something really, really silly. And, and I know it sounds like a good question, but if you understand metabolism, it's actually uh, quite, quite an ignorant question. And that's how much protein can be used to build new muscle tissue every day. Well, almost none, right? Like even the contents of a protein shake way exceed what you could do for that. Like this is not the problem. You can use two or three grams, right? Yet we know that when you can increase protein intake, you can build more muscle. And that's what throws people off. Well, if that's the case, then why does this doesn't match? Because you asked the wrong question. You didn't ask how much protein should I be consuming to optimize muscle growth through all the various metabolic factors in the body or to impact the amount of protein degradation and protein breakdown and everything else from my training and other life? No, you're asking how much can be used to build muscle. Well, very little of it. But it still doesn't mean that you won't personally build more muscle if you add another 50 grams to what you're eating now. Because it's not using that protein to build muscle. It's using that protein for various metabolic things. It is using it to prevent protein breakdown for fuel. It is used for many anti-catabolic things, not just the building the new tissue. Less than 1% of the protein you eat, no matter what, is going to be used towards that. Unless it's really, though, then it might exceed 1%. It might be 2 or 3% or 4% if your protein intake is low. But that's not the point. But we do know that muscle growth itself in the lab seems to cap out at about 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight. So then people assume, oh, well, then that's what I need to consume as the target. And, and I would say, hey, if, if you're trying to hit the amount of protein you need to maximize growth while consuming as little protein as possible, maybe your budget or whatever, sure, that's the number you should aim for. But when we start discussing 
other benefits, there are enormous metabolic benefits to more protein. We know that protein overfeeding tends to cause better uh, body composition. And we have studies on this showing that protein overfeeding, and, and again, we're talking very, very high amounts of protein. I don't mean 200 grams. I'm talking 350, 400 for a lot of you. That yes, when you start going that high, even in a calorie surplus, a small calorie surplus, you don't gain any body fat. We've had studies to where people lifting, consuming those sort of protein intakes, even on you know a 500 or 600 calorie surplus, they don't gain body fat. Okay, all right, there's a big benefit. The recomposition effect is present no matter what. You preserve muscle better when you're cutting. You can eat more calories without gaining body fat. So if you're trying to gain the leanest muscle possible, like let's say you're trying to gain muscle and you want to minimize body fat gain, it's not about running the smallest uh, surplus possible. It's about forcing more protein down. That will absolutely do it. Then we talk about the other metabolic benefits. All right, let's say that we are dealing with someone who is struggling with obesity. All right, protein has a high satiety. We also deal with that protein overfeeding effect, the thermic effect, the inability to store protein as fat at any level. All right, what you'll start finding is that people who are obese, if they are strength training and stuff, if they take their protein intake way up, they'll lose body fat more quickly on the same calories in. Now people say, are you saying calories in, calories out, does it matter? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it changes the whole system. We're still bound by calories in and calories out. Your calories out is going to be higher. Okay, calories out is going to be higher. So when people say not all calories are created equal, what they should be meaning is that protein is superior here. What they'll do is idiots will use it to justify, oh, I need to be eating an ultra-high fat diet, which is actually quite wrong. Uh, that actually, from that same math or concept they're using, fat is probably the worst thing you can be consuming if you had to narrow it down on a calorie-for-calorie -calorie basis, particularly saturated fats, right? But protein is the other end. Protein gives us enormous benefits in terms of metabolic health, energy turnover, muscle preservation, recomposition. Then we get into all the other stuff. How about the, all these other metabolic health markers? How about connective tissue, tendons, skin, all these things? Ultra high protein intakes can benefit you here. On top of the fact that it's hard to overeat protein, it has a high satiety to go with the high thermic effect, that high nutrient partitioning effect. So the reality is for most people, if they massively jack their protein intake way up and tried to force feed more protein, the weight loss process would be easier. But again, by saying increase the protein, I'm not telling them to increase their fat doing it. I'm talking about lean protein sources, right? Lean protein sources. Okay, enormous benefits to doing this. It actually is kind of the key if you're really looking for a shortcut or a biohack, this is the closest thing you're going to get to it towards just changing body composition and losing body fat. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.